My father slept with a Colt revolver under his pillow. At meal times, there was also a gun on the dining room table. During the day, Dad wore a shoulder holster. Mum had a Beretta in her handbag. It was the early 1950s in Nairobi, Kenya, the days of the uprising by what the colonial authorities called the Mau Mau. The rebels called themselves the Land and Freedom Army. I was six years old, an audacious English boy growing up in a house where Impala browsed on the garden flowers at night and a stream ran through the bottom of the garden, which was a passage for lions and also infiltration route for guerrilla fighters headed into town. In the evening, when we let the dogs in, I had to check that no Mau Mau fighter had slipped into the yard with them. For a six years old, this was like living an adventure. On the other hand, the awareness of danger and the uncertainty was to help me cope with difficult situations later in life. My parents were British, but in those restless years after the Second World War, they emigrated to South Africa. Stamped into my father's passport was his allowance in cash and their worldly wealth, five pounds sterling, 1,500 in today's money, not a fortune on which to build a new life, but enough. They settled first in Durban, but the humid climate adversely affected my father's asthma. So they moved to Pretoria, the crucible of Afrikanderdom, becoming ever more strident. Here, in a small thatched cottage, they built on the corner of Nicholson and Konig Wilhelmina Drive. My sister Valerie was born. Compared with the undulating countryside of their English heritage and the comfort of their own language, Pretoria was a harsh city in a harsh landscape for my parents. It was too predominantly Afrikaans-speaking. At a time when the Afrikaner had recently come into power, and this made an uneasy environment for the young English couple. As they watched the National Party implement a series of racist laws, they became increasingly unhappy. The most endearing recollection that I have of these years is standing at Pretoria's crowded Vortrecker Street in September 1950 on a sunny spring day. The jacaranda trees had just come into bloom. The sky was heartbreaking blue. I was not quite four years old. General Jan Smut's coffin was wheeled past on a gun carriage, followed by a black stallion, saddled up with his riding boots and stirrups facing the rear. The crowd was silent. His death, coming not long after the National Party had won the 1948 election, seemed to usher in a new era, the era of apartheid. My parents watched the cortege and reached a decision to leave South Africa and make home in Kenya. At the time, my father worked for Barclays Bank, DCO, the leading British bank, as the initials standing for Dominion, Colonial and Overseas implied. He was a banker from a line of bankers, His father had worked in the colonial office in the Caribbean and had been controller of Northern Rhodesia's finances before retiring to Coots Bank in the UK. Banking was in the family blood and Africa became an obsession. Moving from Pretoria to Nairobi was no big deal and certainly not a difficult decision. In 1952, we moved into a small bungalow on the outskirts of Nairobi. It was made of natural stone quarried from the Great Rift Valley with a roof of red clay tiles, the epitome of a colonial home with wide verandas overlooking a lush garden. The rooms were generously sized and had a fireplace as Nairobi's nights can be cold, particularly in the rainy season. There was no electricity. Light for reading or playing cards came from a pressurized gas lamp which hissed softly in the evening. The house smelt of wood smoke from the Cooney cooker and burning gas lanterns, a smell that was only replaced when the torrential rains came and brought the earth aroma of vegetation and hope. 